Well, good morning, sunshine. No cause for alarm. I ain't here to knife you, anything so crass as that. Could have done that while you was getting your beauty rest. Besides, you have nothing worth stealing, near as I can tell. Although those letters were an interesting way to kill time. Why would you read my letters? Question is, why wouldn't I? It is also abundantly clear that those are not your letters. They are neither addressed to you nor written by your hand. But of course you know that. Who are you? I am the man asking the questions. So, a fella crawls ashore from a burning ship in the dead of night, looking like a wet dog. In his possession are letters, obviously written by a friend of mine, to his brother and then his sister-in-law. Makes a man wonder. What do you want? On closer inspection, the wet dog bears an uncanny likeness to said friend, making him perhaps a son, more likely a nephew. We are talking about Marl here, so I'm inclined to go with nephew. Am I getting close? So I'm right. Kind's tits. There are times when I impress even myself, but gloating is so unbecoming. Let us continue. Wet Dog has in his possession a set of beautiful and well-maintained blades. Not just one, but two of them. And judging by the way he's slinging those steels, he is apparently a skilled fighter. <laughs> now it's getting juicy. Also in the Wet Dog's bag is a curious set of armor. Looks a fair bit like Morak Tong getup. How am I doing so far? Go on. Very well, I shall do just that. I applaud your sport and disposition, and thank you for humoring me. As a gesture of appreciation, I shall refrain from referring to you as a wet dog from this point forward. Castian. Well, look at that. We are surely becoming friends. An answer for an answer, then. I am Robard Graves, and I am at your service. Any friend of Marl's is a friend of mine. Oh, look at that. You're good, boy. You mask your feelings like a pro. Better than most I've seen, but I've been reading people for years. Clearly, you ain't no friend of your uncle. And that brings us to the question of motivation. Now, I reckon there's only two reasons you would come all this way. And now I know which one it is. You must be very proud of yourself. Indeed I am, Mr. Keenlet. Indeed I am. But... Now that we have this circle jerk out of the way, what say we get down to the dealing? What makes you think I want any sort of deal with you? Because you would be dumber than a twice-raised draugr not to. <laughs> and I know you ain't an imbecile. You are here on a mission of your own making with no clue where to start. I can help you on your way. Very well. Before I make any sort of deal with you, I need some answers. Well, certainly. Ask away. How did you know I would be here? Well, I didn't. Thanks to a cursed bloodline and a fair quantity of inbreeding, I possess what some call the gift of sight. What this means is that, under certain circumstances, my ball sack will begin to tingle, and into my mind will be projected the most confounding visions of the future, and on rare occasions, the past. Over the years, I've learned that when this horse shit happens, it is incumbent upon me to pay attention. In this particular instance, my trouser visions depicted a place and a time, but did not indicate who had passed through that door. I was filled to bursting with curiosity. So here I am. So what is this deal? Ah, cut to the chase. I like you already. You have a desire to do harm to Mom, and I need him to help me solve a little mystery. I've tried to find him myself with absolutely no luck. Whatever the old man has done to conceal his location, it is powerful magic, but perhaps you are able to see something I can. I can provide you with some clues to start your search. Uh, in exchange, you allow me to get what I need before you put him in the mud. 
I thought you were friends. You are really prepared to sell him out? Well, now that is a complicated question. Was a day when old Marl and me were pretty tight, but that was in another time, quite literally. What is that supposed to mean, literally another time? Oh, never mind me. Old Robar just has a curious way of speaking sometimes. The point is that I reckon I ain't so attached to your uncle as I once was, but that don't mean I don't need him. Temporarily, leastways. How long will this job take? Oh, just a short spell, I imagine. I need him to show me where a body is buried, a body he buried himself. Once that's done, he's all yours. All right, you have a deal. Well, that's just terrific. I figured you for a reasonable man. Now, I reckon you're gonna to wanna to know where to start. Having perused your letters, you are clearly planning to visit two locations mentioned therein, the Mage College and Dragon's Reach. Here is a map with said locations clearly marked. However, there is a third location not mentioned in the letters, the Carpathian Inn. It's located in the Pale, just a stone's throw from Windhelm. This was Marl's base of operations for some time. I recommend you check there also. Thank you. Of course. I am wholeheartedly invested in your success, Mr. Keenlet. Be advised, I have visited all of these locations myself and encountered dead ends in all of them, but perhaps you will have better luck than I. Just start a curiosity. What sort of grudge must a man harbor to kill his own kin. My uncle's folly destroyed our family. His selfish pursuit of his Lorcan theories did not simply embarrass him. It was the ruin of our family, causing everyone, even those of us who had not seen or heard from him in years, to be excommunicated from House Telvanni. It robbed me of my future and destroyed my parents. I see. Yeah, Marl has a way. Uh, it's a single-minded way of doing things. Actually, not unlike this fella here. <laughs> Once old Iskramor put his mind to killing elves, well, changed the world forever. Not for the better, I'd wager. Huh. What is it? I don't know. I guess I never pictured him quite so tall as this. Perhaps it's not to scale. Of course, Mr. Kinlet, I am certain you are correct. Well, that was a long time ago, after all, and things in the distance always seem small now, don't they? 